Hi, my name is Sean Kavanagh. I'm a PhD student joined between the groups of David Scanlon at UCL and Aaron Walsh at Imperial. And my research is focused on emerging solid state photovoltaic materials. I'm delighted to have the platform to speak today about my recent work on enhancing the optical absorption of vacancy ordered triple perovskites through mixed heterovalent doping. So here we go. In the field of solid state material science, there has been a dramatic push toward the discovery of so-called perovskite inspired materials which aim to replicate the exceptional optoelectronic performance of lead-based perovskites while overcoming their infamous uh, stability and toxicity pitfalls. One such material class which has emerged is that of vacancy-ordered triple perovskites. So in this um, family, the perovskite formula is tripled um, and the b size cation, so lead, in, lead halide perovskites, is partially replaced by a trivalent cation, such as bismuth or antimony, while leaving one third of the B cation sites uh, unoccupied in order to satisfy charge balance. The result is a quasi 2D structure um, with pairs of bismuth bromine octahedral layers separated by a layer of vacant cation sites. By avoiding the presence of lead, these materials are thus non-toxic, yet may still be synthesized using the low temperature solution-based methods, which were of course one of the primary sources of hype behind the lead halide perovskites. Uh, additionally, these materials have been demonstrated to be stable in air and to exhibit long charge carrier lifetimes comparable to that of the lead-based perovskites. Unfortunately, however, um, these materials exhibit large electronic band gaps, which, although suitable for certain optoelectronic applications such as um, X-ray detectors, uh, prohibit their use in most photovoltaic or photocatalytic um, devices. As such, the objective of this work was to identify a route to uh, enhancing the absorption of these materials within the visible range so that they may be, may be more suitable for the majority of photo applications. We employed a heterovalent doping strategy, substituting a large portion of bismuth in the material with tin, which of course, um, being in a different periodic group, has stable oxidation states of plus two and plus four, as opposed to bismuth's plus three. Uh, in doing so, we observed a dramatic redshift of the optical absorption onset for the tin doped material, moving from about 500 nanometers to above 800 nanometers, uh, corresponding to this drastic color change from a yellow powder to black. Um, evidently, this was a fascinating result, and so we began a theoretical analysis of the dope material in order to um, elucidate the physical origin of this optical behavior. So to analyze the electronic behavior of crystal defects such as dopants, we computationalists use what we call defect formation energy diagrams, which plot the formation energy of a given defect species um, against the Fermi level in the material, where uh, zero corresponds to the valence band maximum and up here is the conduction band minimum. So normally we just show the lowest energy, i.e. the most favorable uh, charge state for each value of the Fermi level, which would just be the green colored component here, uh, which simplifies the diagram considerably when uh, looking at multiple defect species at once. So in our case, we implemented relativistic hybrid density functional theory to accurately model the electronic structure of the dope material and to calculate these formation energies. So in this case, for a hypothetical uh, tin on bismuth substitutional dopant, we witnessed so-called negative U behavior uh, with the only ch stable charge states within for a Fermi level within the band gap being uh, plus one and minus one, corresponding to tin in the plus four and plus two oxidation states. So this behavior suggests that tin dopants will likely disproportionate into plus four and plus two oxidation states in the material, and that the Fermi level would be subsequently pinned um, in this region here uh, in order to maintain charge balance. Moreover, the resulting electrostatic attraction between the opposite charged substitutional sites, um, in addition to the high doping concentrations employed of up to 25%, indicated that tin dopants would be likely to cluster in the dope material rather than forming totally isolated and um, substitutional sites. So to test this hypothesis, we calculated the formation energy for a double tin bismuth substitution, employing a large simulation supercell to account for any image charge interactions and compared the results to the case of isolated defects. So by calculating the formation energies of uh, 
a double substitution in all possible arrangements up to 16 angstrom separation. Uh, so for example, <clears throat> as shown here, an intralayer nearest neighbor coordination, uh, but also an intralayer next nearest coordination, interlayer nearest neighbor, um, interlayer next nearest neighbor, etc. Uh, we observed that a clustered nearest neighbor coordination of tin bismuth substitutions, so the one shown here, uh, was strongly favored in the dope material, lying about 300 milli electron volts uh, lower in energy than for the isolated substitutional defects. So this changes the picture of doping behavior in this material from that of these isolated uh, tin on bismuth substitutional sites to that of clustered double substitution complexes, which drastically affects um, the electronic behavior of this doping species, where here we have also shown the formation energies of all uh, substitution vacancy complexes uh, possible in this system. So there's quite a bit to unpack here, but firstly, we find that the double substitution complex, shown here in green, um, is by far the most favorable tin-related defect in this system, with the much higher energies of the substitution vacancy complexes precluding their formation in uh, significant concentrations in the dope material. Secondly, the tin bismuth double substitution is stable in the neutral charge state for a Fermi level uh, near the mid gap. Um, and both of the associated charge transition levels are again negative U levels. So the balance between these two doubly charged uh, states for this substitution complex results in a self-consistent Fermi level pinned directly at the midpoint of these two charge transitions, um, which occurs just above the intrinsic mid-gap value, uh, which again was in um, exact agreement with the experimental results. From analyzing the orbital projected and site projected density of states, as well as performing beta charge density partitioning, we were able to confirm that the double substitution complex indeed corresponds to disproportionated tin, acting as a mixed valency dopant uh, in this system. So in a neutral state, this species gives rise to two electronic states within the band gap, arising from strong tin S and bromine P hybridization. So the lower energy fully occupied state is associated with the tin two plus site, um, while the higher energy unoccupied level is associated with tin four plus. Given this electronic structure, we calculated the energies of the related optical excitations corresponding to electronic transitions from the occupied lone pair state to tin four plus, from tin two plus to the conduction band minimum, and indeed from the valence band maximum to the unoccupied tin four plus level. Um, the calculation of the intervalence charge transfer band, so um, from the occupied lone pair state to tin four plus, um, is actually quite a bit difficult as it requires us to constrain the occupation of the electronic states in order to prevent um, relaxation down to the ground state electronic configuration. From calculating the vibrational relaxation energy of the optically excited state, we can use Marcus Hush theory of electron transfer to also predict the vibrational broadening of this uh, strong absorption peak. So these calculated energies and broadenings gave excellent agreement with the experimental absorption spectrum shown here, um, providing us a valuable insight to the atomistic mechanism of this massive subband gap uh, absorption enhancement. One final question we wanted to answer was the origin of unusual concentration dependence of the absorption peak. So in the classic work from the 1960s by Hush and Day on intervalence charge transfer in antimony doped cesium tin chloride, they found that the energy of the absorption maximum um, increased with greater doping concentrations. They suggested that this was due to a destabilization of the excited state at high doping concentrations. However, in our case, we found that as the doping concentration um, increased, the energy of the absorption decreased uh, while the uh, peak became more broadened. So this behavior again was explained by our computational analysis from which we calculated enhanced stabilization of the relatively delocalized excited state at high doping concentrations due to greater interaction and reduced spatial separation with other um, nearby excited complexes. So the primary conclusion of this work is that mixed valency doping can provide a 
powerful route to enhancing and tuning the optical absorption of semiconducting materials. Um, in terms of ongoing research, we're in the process of testing these materials in a lab of Sam Strength at Cambridge in solar cell devices um, and performing photoconductivity measurements to further verify our predictions of the defect to band edge and band edge to defect uh, optical transition energies for this system. To end, I'd like to thank our collaborators, Chantelle Krajewska and Professor Robert Palgrave, as well as my supervisors, Professor Aaron Walsh and David Scanlon, um, and all members of the Walsh and Scanlon research groups. Thank you very much for your time and attention. One final thing I forgot to mention, if you are interested in seeing some other uh, novel work on band gap modulation in perovskite inspired materials, please check out my poster presentation in this very same symposium as well. Thank you.